الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أحصى كل شيء عددا ورفع بعض خلقه على بعض فكانوا طرائق قددا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولا يكون أبدا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا بني يذهبوا فتحسسوا من يوسف وأخيه ولا تيأسوا من روح الله إنه لا ييأس من روح الله إلا القوم الكافرون وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم إذا دخلتم على المريض فنفسوا له في أجله فإن ذلك لا يرد شيئا ويطيب نفسه أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Honorable scholars, respected brothers and elders as humans, as mortals we are often controlled by our emotions. وَلَا حُزْنٌ يَدُومُ وَلَا سُرُورُ وَلَا بُؤْسٌ عَلَيْكَ وَلَا رَخَاءُ In the morning you find a person in high spirits because he got some good information, some good news. Before the evening he receives some bad news that puts an end to all the joy he had for that day. One side you have a neighbor where there's a wedding and you need to share in the joy. On the other side you have a neighbor that loses a child. In life, we are fluctuating between these emotions, not by the moment, by the second of life. By the second of life, these fluctuation of emotions happen. At times it happens so swiftly that you can hardly enjoy your moment of joy. And there's something there to remove that joy. When, when we completed in our madrasa, one week later I got married and um, there were some of my classmates that got married on the same day of the Jalsa. So they said, why don't you do the same thing? I said, such happy occasion seldom come in life. Rather separate the two. Why you want to merge it and make it one happy day? There's a happy of a, a day of joy where you're formally completing your humble studies. That's a day of joy. And your day of marriage is the first and last day of happiness day. <laughs> they say on the lighter note, this boy was getting married the next day and his uncle told him, my boy, you'll remember this day as the happiest day of your life. So he said, uncle, you mean tomorrow? He said, no, I mean today. <laughs> your wedding is tomorrow, you'll remember today as the happiest day of your life. Anyway, be it as it may, what is our duty and obligation in the midst of these emotions? My humble focus for today is, what is our responsibility to our fellow humans when they are going through a rough patch in life. What is our responsibility? We learn from the beautiful teachings of the Prophet wasallam, an amazing quality and description of the Prophet wasallam. It's a lengthy narration. It's narrated from Hind bin Abi Hala and a similar narration from Ali radiallahu anhu as well. Very beautiful narration in the Shama'il that gives a description of the Prophet wasallam. Part of the description the Prophet ﷺ was a man of perpetual concern and grief. The Prophet ﷺ was a man of perpetual concern and grief. But the most amazing part about it, there's a flip side with another description. He was a man of perpetual grief but yet he had a permanent smile. He was a man of perpetual grief, but he had a permanent smile. Mike is not working. So that is the amazing, the, just, just run your mind and apply your logic. It's difficult for us to merge these two in theory, never mind in practicality. Perpetual worry and concern, and yet the Prophet ﷺ has a permanent smile. They speak of oxymoron, two contradicting things together. They say the best example of that is happily married. <laughs> Pretty ugly. I'm busy doing nothing. So the Prophet ﷺ's description is so amazing. The Prophet ﷺ had permanent worry. Yet he always had a smile on his Mubarak face. Amongst the lessons from the noble character and legacy of the Prophet 
is to always make an effort to lighten the burden of others. At every moment you make an effort, you see somebody is concerned, don't just pass a judgment to say this man is miserable every day. He's probably going through a rough patch and a tough day. The minimum we can do is comfort him in that grief. As Muslims, our obligation is we share in the joy of others and we share in the grief of others. At times, we overlook the importance of sharing in the joy of others. Sharing in the grief of someone else, that's a natural, intrinsic human quality. If you see someone in pain, inherently you should feel pain because of his pain. But to feel happy on the joyous occasion of someone, that takes courage. At times, what will, do, what will the devil do? He will infiltrate and jealousy will creep in our heart and we will not be able to tolerate witnessing the prosperity of someone else. It's the man's happy occasion. You need not tell him a nasty word. It's the day of his function. Don't complain about the food. Tell him it was wonderful. He has a thousand other things on his head. You need to comfort him. Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu used to say, Kafa bil mar'i hasidan ayyagtamma waqta sururi. It is sufficient to render a man as a jealous individual if he is sad on your happy occasion. It is sufficient to render a person jealous if he is sad on your happy occasion. May Allah Ta'ala give us the ability that we share in the joy of others Amen. and we truly express our joy and our inner happiness for his prosperity. Whatever goodness it is, we need to express our joy and pleasure on his achievement. And the other side is to share in the grief of other people. The Prophet Sallallahu amazing quality, he always lightened the burden of others. He always lightened the burden of others. And this is the prophetic teachings. The hadith I recited before you, it's in Tirmidhi Sharif on the strength of Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu anhu. The Prophet Sallallahu said, when you visit a sick person, and again there's great reward in visiting the sick people. The Prophet said that when a person goes to visit a sick person, and mashallah there are many people doing social work and visiting the hospitals and taking food there uh, for those that are ill in the hospital, may Allah Ta'ala reward them with a befitting reward inshallah. The malaika make dua for you when you visit the sick person. And then an announcer announces and says, Tibta, wa mamshaka, wa min al manzila. Your action is wonderful. Every step you're taking towards the visiting the sick is meritorious. Wa min al manzila. And take it from the Prophet ﷺ. Your this one visit to the sick has confirmed you one palace in Jannah. The etiquette of visiting the sick. The etiquette of visiting the sick. This incident comes to mind. We'll come to that. Sirri Sakti Rahmatullah, a group of people came to visit him when he was ill. And they sat for a rather long duration. And this caused him somewhat uneasiness. And again, etiquettes, the Prophet said, The duration of a visit to the sick should be the time it takes to milk a cow, uh, uh, milk a camel. So that much of time you should sit and then excuse yourself make your dua and move now the person is uneasy he needs to move he needs to get some family assistance and you sitting there and you're not moving so when they were exiting the room they told Sirri Sakti uh, make dua for us your pious man make dua for us so Sirri Sakti lifted his hands Allahumma allimhum kayfa ya'udu al-marda Allah teach them the etiquettes of visiting the sick <coughs> Allah teach them the etiquettes of visiting the sick. Coming back to our point, the Prophet said, when you visit the sick, give him hope of a swift recovery. Say motivational words to him. Then the Prophet said, your motivational words will not change the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His death is written at a time and that will happen. But by you saying encouraging words, you tayyibu nafsahu, you'll bring comfort to your fellow brother. <coughs> and that's sufficient as reward. They speak of psychology. 
Now you're visiting him there, and you tell him, hey man, I, I, I didn't know you were so sick, man. Ma, sure. I would have come earlier, man. Really, Allah make it easy. Your will is done in that, right? Now, the man was sick already. Now, other leg in the cover also. Now, what you need to say? Hey man, I thought you were really, you're looking very well, mashallah. Next week, Sunday, we'll be playing golf again. <coughs> what will happen? You tayyib. It won't soften the pace of his recovery, but it will bring comfort to his heart. You tayyib nafsahu, it will bring comfort to his heart. So here is Zahir radiallahu anhu, a Bedouin sahabi, a villager, a simple man. In fact, the narration says he was poor and he lacked physical beauty as well. The Prophet وسلم, came from the rear and grabbed him. <coughs> Listen folks, I have this slave to sell. Anyone interested in purchasing him? <coughs> so he cut loose and he fell. The narration says he fell the palm of the Prophet وسلم, So he was cutting loose and then all of a sudden he stopped. This is an embrace from Muhammad وسلم. And then he said, إِذَنْ لَتَجِدَنَّنِي كَاسِدًا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Oh, Nabi Allah, you want to sell me? You won't get anything for me. I'm an ordinary slave. إِذَنْ لَتَجِدَنَّنِي كَاسِدًا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ So this is a man that's going through an emotional condition. What is he feeling? I have absolutely no value in the sight of people. What did the Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? لَكِنَّكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Zahir, don't worry about the perception of people. Take it from me. In the sight of Allah, there's nobody more valuable than you. One word. What that one sentence of the Prophet ﷺ did to the emotions of Zahir? That's the wrong perception of people. In the sight of Allah, I doubt there is someone more valuable than you. And on the contrary, subhanallah, look at the psychology of the Prophet ﷺ, look at the approach of the Prophet ﷺ. It's the battle of Uhud, the Mubarak finger of the Prophet ﷺ is injured. The finger of the Prophet ﷺ meant more to the Sahaba than their own lives. So it was not something light. It's not my finger, it's not your finger, it's the finger that split the moon in two. It's the finger of the hand that enjoys categoric reference in the Quran. It's that Mubarak finger. Sahaba are concerned. Oh my Sahaba, don't worry about me. You go on, strive in the path of Allah and fulfill your duty. This is but one finger that has been injured. And I take solace from the fact that whatever injury came in its ways in the path of Allah will be rewarded for it. What is it? Well, and you are but one finger. It's not but one finger. But when the Prophet ﷺ was afflicted, that is how he comforted others at the time of his personal affliction. What courage that takes. The ayat that I recited before you when Yusuf alayhi salam dispatched his children to search when Yusuf, sorry, Yaqub alayhi salam dispatched his children to search for his brother Yusuf and bin Yamin. He's lost two children. What is the advice he gives to his sons? Ya bani yadhabu fatahassasu min Yusuf. Oh my sons, go and search for Yusuf. Wa akhihi and his brother. Do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. He is the man that's in the greatest pain, but he's comforting others. That was the quality of the Prophet ﷺ. He always comforted other people. The narration of Tirmidhi Sharif, he performed salah and he turned around and he seen some Sahaba had collapsed because of severe hunger. Now how do you deal with that? لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا لَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ لَأَحْبَبْتُمْ أَن تَزْدَادُوا فَاقَةً Oh my Sahaba, it's only a matter till of time till you will see the reward that Allah will give you for this hunger. If you were to be exposed to that high reward that Allah has kept for you, you wouldn't have mind going on hungry for a few more days. Now they were down in emotions. 
The Prophet ﷺ comforted them. The Prophet ﷺ consoled them. The Prophet ﷺ motivated them. At times, all we need to do when you see a brother and he's down in distress, all you need to do is borrow a good ear. That's all. Just listen to the man's problem. In English, they say, it takes great courage to stand up and speak. It takes great courage to stand up and speak, but it takes greater courage to sit down and listen. At times, all you need to do is listen to the man. Just give him a shoulder to cry on. That's all. Here is Jabir radiallahu anhu, a great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His father passes on. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sees him one day. Jabir, what's the matter? I see you very distressed. Tuwuffi ya abi wa qad taraka daynan kathiran ya Rasulallah. Oh, Nabi of Allah, my father has passed on and he has left behind a debt. I doubt I will be able to settle the debt. So it's the concern of settling the debt of my father that leaves me distressed. The Prophet sallallahu said, okay, you prepare the dates that you owe, whatever you have, and you call me. The Prophet sallallahu came, according to one narration, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhumma wa wat, faja'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa da'a bil barakah. And the Prophet sallallahu made dua, oh Allah, you bless Jabir in these dates of his. And then the Prophet sallallahu said, now call your creditors and pay them. Jabir says, When I began settling the debt of my father, I was convinced that the amount I have is not sufficient to settle the debt. If this amount of dates happened to settle the date of my the, the debt of my father, I would be elated. I would be ecstatic. That's when I started weighing. But the Prophet ﷺ made dua for barakah. Now before we progress with the hadith, I want to remind you and myself one important point. The Prophet ﷺ was not a man that had a free life, freelancer doing nothing, just going around and talking to this one and talking to that one. No, the schedule of the Prophet ﷺ was very busy. It's recorded in the Quran. Inna laka fin nahari sabahan tawila. You have a long journey by day inviting people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by night, qumil layla illa qalila. You need to perform tahajjud salah. Fa idha faragta fan sab wa ila rabbika fargab. When you complete your duty of inviting people to Allah, then remain firm in your worship to Allah. So it's a very, very busy day. But yet in that busy time, the Prophet ﷺ found the moments to touch the lives of Sahaba on an individual basis. It's a matter of making time one by one going to them. And obviously that meant the world to them. Anas radiallahu's brother had a pet, a bird, and he named it Nughair. And the Prophet ﷺ would visit him and say, Ya Aba Umair. Mada fa'alan nughayr. Abu Umair, what's the latest on your bird nughayr? Now imagine a man whose piety and taqwa is at optimum level. The sajda of the Prophet ﷺ, Wallah, you cannot get a moment in which there is closeness to Allah greater than the sajda of the Prophet ﷺ. But after that, he does not become oblivious of those around him. He has time to visit a young boy and ask him of his pets. So Jabir says, I was more than happy if the Prophet, if this would settle the debt of my father, I was more than happy. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua for barakah. Allah gave barakah in the date. When I started, I said, I doubt it will be enough. I settled the entire debt of my father. And when I looked at it as if not one date was removed. According to one narration, 13 wasak remained. From which seven wa ajwa is a is an Arabic measure. Anyway, I looked at it as if not one date was removed. That was the blessings of the dua of the Prophet. In our time, you do an EFT payment and you check your balance is the same. And then you go back to see I didn't miss a zero or two there. And you say, No, it's right. Wow. He settled the entire debt and he looked at it as if it was not touched. Allah's Nabi seen him distressed, Allah's Nabi responded to the call. 
That was not the only time that Allah's Nabi responded to the call of Jabir. They returning from the battle, that riqa. This is the same Jabir. And let me remind you of an incident in the childhood of Jabir. He's in, in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Shamail Kubra narration. The Prophet Sallallahu received some sweet dish. He goes around with his Mubarak hands and he distributes it amongst the Sahaba. How fortunate they were. They were receiving from the Mubarak hands of the Prophet Sallallahu Jabir says, I was a young child in the rear of the gathering. The Prophet Sallallahu came to me. He gave me my share. And then he asked me, do you want to have a second serving? I said, by all means. And the Prophet Sallallahu gave me a second share. He says, they were senior Sahaba, but I was the only one that walked away with a double share. Now that's the indelible impression and imprint that was left on the heart of Jabir from his childhood. Allah forbid, Allah forbid. It's so painful if your nephew has to see you and say, hey, not that uncle again. <laughs> from the childhood of Jabir, the Prophet ﷺ left that impression on his heart. So here they're returning from that riqa and I'm condensing the narration because of time. The Prophet ﷺ comes from the rear, he sees Jabir in the back. Malaka ya Jabir. Jabir, what's the matter? You, you've been left behind. Sahaba are all gone far ahead. Why have you been left behind? Abta'ani jamali hadha ya Rasulallah. Or abta'abi jamali hadha ya Rasulallah. Both narrations appear. Oh, Nabi of Allah, my conveyance is very slow. Um, with this old 1975 model, I'm struggling up here. Abta'abi jamali hadha ya Rasulallah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Nawilni hadha al asa. Jabir, give me the stick in your hand. The Prophet ﷺ gently massaged that animal with his Mubarak hand. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the fortune of that animal and changed the life of Jabir. Jabir then mounted that conveyance. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَمْشِ الْآنَ مِشْيَةً مَا مَشَى مِثْلَهَا قَطُّ You talk of turbo, you talk of nitrous. Nothing in comparison to the Mubarak hand of the Prophet ﷺ. Jabir says, وَصَارَ جَابِرٌ فِي مُقَدَّمَةِ الرَّكْبِ بَعْدَ أَنْ كَانَ فِي مُؤَخَرَتِهِ فَقَدْ صَارَ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُ أَنْ يَرُدَّ جَمَلَهُ عَنِ الْإِسْرَاءِ He was right in the rear. Now he surpasses everyone and comes in front. And you know what an embarrassment it is to all those latest models in front? This old model is coming and just... And everybody... Jamil, what's happening? أَصَابَتْهُ بَرَكَةٌ أَصَابَتْهُ بَرَكَةٌ it's the Mubarak hand of my Nabi. It's the Mubarak hand. Now one was, you see a person stuck in the back. Number one, obviously, what safety reasons in mind? Do we stop or not? Do we assist or not? Number two, what's the most we do? Oh, okay, Allah, make it easy, brother. We'll meet in Durban, inshallah. <laughs> the Prophet Sallallahu helped him. So I have the stress. Here's my conveyance. Everybody has gone ahead. The Prophet Sallallahu assisted him. He aided him. Now Jabir comes right in front. I ask for your undivided attention. It's an amazing narration. The Prophet Sallallahu comes next to Jabir. كَيْفَ تَرَى بَعِيرَكَ يَا Jabir? Jabir, how's she moving? هُوَ بِخَيْرٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ هُوَ بِخَيْرٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ On Nabi of Allah, it's running like a dream. Like a bomb. أَتَبِيعُنِي جَمَلَكَ هَذَا يَا Jabir? Jabir, you don't want to sell it to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, 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 no, 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 no. You know what? I'll give it to you as a gift. The narration says, وَصَعِبَ عَلَى جابر. I cried when I read this. وَصَعِبَ عَلَى جابر أن يتخلى عن جمله فليس لهم ناضح غيره. It was very difficult for him to part from that animal because it was his conveyance and his means of income also. That's all he had. لكنه صعب عليه أكثر أن يرد طلب رسول الله. But it was more difficult for him to decline the request of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said no no. So many he make a price. He said no. You say. نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said أخذته بدرهم. I give you one dirham. Is it one dirham? You might as well take it for free. That's the Ibn Tawbinani, Ya Rasulallah. I mean, I'll be losing out. What am, I'd rather get the thawab of giving it. What am I going to do with one dirham? Fabi dirhamain. 
I'll give you two dirhams. Jabir said, not impressive either. The Prophet ﷺ continued till he said, Hatta balaga uqiyatan min dhahab. I'll give you one uqiyah of gold. Jabir said, deal done. Why? Well, tadhakkara Jabir, he recalled that I owe a person one ounce, one uqiyah of gold. I can settle the debt with this payment. He said, oh, Nabi of Allah, now you're buying this conveyance of mines. How do I get back home? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Laka vahruhu ila al-Madina. Nothing to worry about. You continue riding it till we reach Medina Munawwara. Jabir says, now we're returning. And I'm moving swiftly. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes near. Jabir, what's the hurry? What's the hurry? Now again, the beauty of Sahaba, there was no formalities in them. He said, oh, Nabi of Allah, inni hadithu ahdin bi ursin ya Rasulallah. Oh, Nabi of Allah, I just got recently married, man. I need to get home quickly. <laughs> wow. Now look at the beauty of the, 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 the beauty of that environment in society. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did Oh, you didn't even inform me. Okay, it's like that now. No. Bikran am thayyiban. Jabir, you got married to a young woman or a woman that was previously married. Oh, Nabi of Allah, I got married to a woman that was previously married. No, man, Jabir, you are a young man. You could have did better than that. Halla bikran tula'ibuha wa tula'ibuk. You should have brought a younger woman. Oh, Nabi of Allah, I also wanted a young woman, but my father left behind daughters. So I wanted a wife that can be a wife to me and a mother to my, to mother to my sisters as well. The Prophet ﷺ said, Asabta, well done, Jabir. I salute you, well done. Then he says, as we're returning, I'm coming to the end of the narration. The narration of Tirmidhi, Istaghfara li Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khamsa wa ishreena marra. As we were returning, I counted nothing less than 25 times. Allah's Nabi made dua directly in my favor. By my name, he said, Oh Allah, you forgive my Jabir. Oh Allah, you, you, you forgive my Jabir. Oh Allah, you grant Jabir prosperity. Oh Allah, you grant him goodness. Nothing less than 25 times he made dua in my favor. You know what a great virtue that is? We returned home. I went and narrated the incident to my wife. She said, Sam'an wa ta'a. The Prophet ﷺ has bought it. You need to go and give it. So I came and I put my camel next to Masjid al-Nabawi ﷺ and I left it for the Prophet ﷺ. Allah's Nabi told Bilal radiallahu anhu, go and pay Jabir. He's due. He was in charge of the finances of the Prophet ﷺ. Bilal radiallahu anhu. Go and pay Jabir his uqiya of gold. And was Zid who give him extra. This is again the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. You buying something from a poor man, don't ask him for a better price. You buying something from a poor man, for Allah's sake, let him have his rosy and his sustenance. One brother told me, Moran, I have a customer. Even if I say take it for free, he'll say make it cheaper. <laughs> Indian special. <laughs> Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, give him extra. And then Jabir says, I'm walking. And then I suddenly hear someone saying, Jabir, Ajib Rasulullah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is calling you. So I come to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is tawfayt al Jabir, you got your money? Yes, O Nabi of Allah. And I really appreciate the extra that you gave me. It means a lot to me. Jabir, listen. The uqiya of gold is yours. The extra is yours. And the camel is also yours, a gift from me. He said, Oh, Nabi of Allah, Aturani ma kastuka li adhaba bi jamali. Jabir, ma kastuka ay sa wamtuka. Do you think I was negotiating the deal because I wanted the animal? I just wanted to see you happy, Jabir. I just wanted to see you happy. May Allah Ta'ala give us the ability that we always bring joy to others. We always put a smile on the faces of others. The narration of Ibn Abi Dunya says, that smile that you put on the face of someone else will come in the form of an angel when you are in your grave. And that angel will then say, I will defend your case. And اليوم ألقنك حجتك وأثبتك بالقول الثابت وأتشفع لك إلى ربك. Listen, no need. I'll answer on your behalf and I'll hold your hand and put you into Jannah. Who am I? أنا السرور الذي أدخلت على قلب فلان. You remember so and so day you seen that man distressed. And you removed his burden and you lightened his stress. 
I am the happiness that you brought to that man. I'll take you to Jannah. May Allah Ta'ala inspire us all. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.